In this video, I'm going to show sedimentation analysis in HEC RAS. And I take this example directly from videos that were placed on the Hydrologic Engineering Center website. But what I did was I condensed those videos down because I really wanted to develop a video that shows the step-by-step -step process for how to develop this sedimentation analysis within HEC RAS. And this is going to be a 1D sedimentation analysis. And I find that condensing the video down helps me to remember the steps, and I thought that it might help you out also. So I decided that I would make this video and put it onto the, the channel. So one of the things that they do mention in the video is that, that they recommend that you go in and read the technical reference manual and the user's manual. And I also recommend that. This video is really meant just to help you understand and be able to follow the steps that are needed in order to develop a sedimentation analysis within HEC RAS. So one of the first things that you need to do is to develop the geometry file. And it's the same thing that you would do in the hydraulic model. So if we go look at the geometry file, here you can see we've got our cross sections and you can take a look at the various cross sections that are in this model. The next thing that you need to do is to develop a flow file. So again, same thing that you would do for a hydraulic model. And one of the things that they do recommend is that uh, you have a very well calibrated hydraulic model before you go in to do the sedimentation analysis. And in this case, normally you would do for a hydraulic model, you do steady or unsteady flow. You can do unsteady flow with sediment in HEC RAS. Uh, but in this case, we're going to do what's called quasi unsteady. And quasi unsteady just means that it's a hydrograph that's a series of steady flows. It does tend to be more stable than just running unsteady flow for sediment. We can go look at this quasi unsteady flow. And you can see that we have boundary conditions. So it's a very simple model. So we're just going to have one upstream boundary and a downstream boundary. And our upstream boundary is going to be a flow series. And you can see here that we have a fixed start time of 01 July 1975. And we have uh, our dates. It starts on 01 July 1975 and it runs through 08 October 1975. And the time step or the flow duration is 24 hours. And then here's your flows. Now you can see that you have this column that's in between those two. That's a computation increment. And the computation increment basically just is going to specify how you want to break up each one of these flow durations, or each one of these time steps. So if we have a computation increment of six hours, then it means we want to break up our 24 hour time step into four separate steps. And if we have this one hour computation increment, we want to develop, uh, uh, we want to break up our 24 hour time step into 24 different computation increments. Now, you can type these in one by one if you want, but it's probably best if you just tell it to compute a computation increment based on flow. So here we have a range of 10 to 100. Gives you, uh, you tell RAS that you want a six hour computation increment. And you can see here we have a flow of 50 and a flow of 88 that falls in that range. And that gives you a six hour computation increment. If you're between 100 and 1,000, it's going to be a one hour computation increment. And here you can see that you have values from here to here that are between 100 and 1,000. That's why you use this one hour computation increment and then so on from there. So again, depending on what uh, flow range you're in, that's going to determine what computation increment that RAS is going to use. And then we just use a simple normal depth boundary condition. And again, for even when you're doing a hydraulic analysis, or just as when you're doing a hydraulic analysis, all you need to do is specify the friction slope. And from that, RAS is able to then figure out what the normal depth is. So now you have both your geometry and your flow file. In this case, again, you used a quasi unsteady flow. And now we're going to move on to our sediment file. So 
So we tell it that we're editing this sediment data. And there's quite a bit of information in here. And we'll go through these. We have, uh, obviously, the river and the reach. We only have one river, one reach in this case. But if you have multiple, you got to define it for um, each one of uh, the rivers and reaches. You do have a transport function. You have a variety of transport functions that you can use. In this case, we use a Moss and Copeland. You have different sorting methods. So this, is, this tells you to select a sorting, sorting and armoring method. <coughs> in this case, we're going to use Copeland. And then fall velocity method is Ruby. And then we're going to define our bed gradation. Now, this button here allows you to do as many of these bed gradation samples as you want to. And so if you have multiple samples that were taken along your reach that you're interested in modeling, then you can have multiple samples or multiple templates. In this case, we just have one that we're using for this example. And that's called demo bed samples. also want to point out the um, maximum depth column. So you can either define a maximum depth that you're going to allow scholar to occur, or you can specify a minimum elevation. So in this case, we specify five meters. And if you look at the cross section over on the right, here you can see that your solid line is the existing cross section, and your dashed line is showing the potential erosion that could occur. Um, you have left station and right station. Those are the extents that the sedimentation can occur in. So again, if you take a look at this, say so we change that to 100, you can see that that moves out and gives you a, a larger part of the cross section that can be affected by sedimentation. I'm going to change that back to 250 for this run. And then here you have your bed gradation samples, um, or bed gradation. And for this, we you would select which one of the bed gradations you want to use. We only had one, the demo bed samples. So that's what we would use. Uh, we have boundary conditions. So in this case, we need to um, have a sediment rating curve at the upstream end of the model. And we can go look at what's in that rating. By the way, you can do a sediment rating curve if you have a time series, you can use that. There's an equilibrium load. And basically all that does is it, it, it is a certain capacity that can come in at the upstream end and, and it'll, it'll uh, make that capacity such that you get no change at the upstream boundary condition. Uh, you have a capacity ratio, which really just Kind of builds on that equilibrium load so it'll take whatever that computed equilibrium load is and then just multiply it by some sort of ratio um, <clears throat> for either uh, increasing that equilibrium load or decreasing it and then there's also clear water which just means that there's no sediment although when i hover over this it does give me the same definition as equilibrium load so i suspect that that's an error and it probably needed needs to be changed but we can go look at the rating curve and for the rating curve, you can have as many points on the curve as you want. And in this case, here's our flow in cubic meters per second. And these are the total tons that are coming in. So that's the tons of sediment per day, um, which is good. That tells us the amount. But we also need to know what type of sediment is coming in and what's the breakdown of that sediment. And so down here is where you then, for each one of the flows, you then want to specify what is the gradation of the sediment that's actually coming in at those flow rates. And one other thing to point out is that in some cases, your flows might be less uh, or more than what's in the curve. And uh, RAS is uh, fortunately wise enough to extrapolate to be able to handle that. So that concludes the, the development of the sediment data. Oh, one other thing that I did want to show is just that there are certain options in here. Um, you can do user-defined grain classes, your cohesive options, bed change options, different options for transport methods. And this is where it is really important that you read through the technical reference manual and the user's manual and look at the videos that are on the AGC website um, to better understand what fits your model, or, uh, which, what it is that you're looking at. Um, to make sure that, that you are developing a good model. 
So now we have a geometry, quasi unsteady, and a sediment file. So now what we can do is go in and run this quasi unsteady analysis. And I already have the plan made, but if I didn't, I would just do new plan and I'd select my geometry file, my quasi unsteady flow file, and then my sediment data. And then I would compute this. And normally this runs pretty quickly. And in a minute here, we'll see a message that pops up that talks about, and there it is right there in blue, it says that the sediment boundary condition includes a flow that is lower than the minimum flow in the sediment rating curve. And if you remember from the quasi-unsteady flow that we had, some flows that were below 100, and for those, um, and our, our uh, sediment rating curve started at 100, and again, HEC RAS is wise enough to be able to uh, take care of that for us. And now we can go in and we can look at some of the results. So if we go to view and then we go to sediment output, um, sometimes this takes a little bit of time, but if we go and look at the invert change and we go look at the profile, so you can look at uh, time series, you can look at profiles, you can look at cross sections. This does take a little bit of time. Sometimes it will also tell me that it's not responding. You see that it tells me that's not responding, so I'm not going to look at too many of these. In fact, I'm just going to look at the, the profile just to give you an idea of some of the data that's available, but unfortunately it does sometimes get a little bit stuck, but normally it does work. So in this case, we're looking at the invert change and we want to look at the profile and then it should allow me to look at it at different time steps. But for right now, it is telling me that it's not responding, but we'll just give it a minute to see what actually happens here. And it looks like that we now have something. Okay, excellent. So we can then look at, um, so right now we're looking at the first time step. That's not really what we want to look at. I prefer to go and look at the final time step. And here you can see that this is showing how the invert changed at the final time step. And this is, again, this is the downstream ad, and that's the upstream ad. And again, there's a lot of different data that you can look at. But since sometimes it does get locked up, that I'm only going to show the profile. So hopefully you found this video to be helpful. It can give you some idea of how to go in and develop the sediment analysis in HEC RAS. And if you did find it helpful, feel free to subscribe to the channel and you'll find out when I put more videos out on, on a variety of topics. And thanks for watching this one.